Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ubuntu Budgie. As the name implies, this is a variant of Ubuntu that uses the Budgie desktop environment. If you're not familiar, the Budgie desktop environment was originally developed for a Linux distribution called Solus, which is something I will be taking a look at in another video. However, it's been adapted here as a flavor of Ubuntu as it offers a really appealing uh, modern and contemporary desktop environment that has a lot of really unique features. And that's a big part of what I want to look at today. At its core, this is very similar to many other flavors of Ubuntu. At its core, it is Ubuntu. Uh, really, the whole appeal to this are the features that the Budgie desktop environment offers. And we can see this by looking at our default applications. At its core, this really has all the applications you'd expect from standard Ubuntu, uh, such as Firefox as a web browser, Thunderbird for email, all of our typical accessories, and system tools. Uh, however, there are a few notable exceptions. First off, for the file manager, instead of using the default GNOME file manager called Nautilus, this uses Nemo, which is actually pulled from the Linux Mint project. This is a pretty nice file manager. It looks very similar to Nautilus from standard Ubuntu. However, it has a few additional options tucked away here that are absent from Nautilus and uh, are nice to have here. So a good choice in my opinion. Also, from what I can tell, there is no Office Suite installed here by default, which is kind of a weird omission. As far as I'm aware, I did not select to do a minimal install when I installed this. Uh, it appears LibreOffice or any Office suite just isn't here. So obviously that can be installed, but it does seem like a weird omission out of the box. Moving on from our default applications, however, we'll take a look here at the resource usage here of Ubuntu Budgie. And we will see that it out of the box on first boot is using about 750 megabytes of RAM, which compared to standard GNOME is definitely less. Uh, so if you like using Ubuntu, uh, you enjoy a lot of the features it has to offer, but you feel it's a bit heavy on resources, uh, this may be a decent alternative. Uh, it's certainly not the most lightweight, but it's definitely lighter than standard Ubuntu and still offers many of the great features that it has to offer. And those great features are what I want to get into here today, because while they really are the true appeal of Ubuntu Budgie, uh, they're also sort of its biggest enemy, and we'll take a look at exactly why. I want to start with Budgie Welcome. It's a fantastic welcome screen that looks a lot like others you'd expect to see. It, it walks through a lot of the initial steps and tools that you may wish to set up right after you install. However, the biggest problem with this is that it tries to pack so many features into this welcome screen and tucks them away in so many levels that most users aren't going to find a lot of the things that Ubuntu Budgie can do. For example, when this comes up after an installation, most users will jump into the getting started category, figuring that's the best place to start to do a lot of their necessary tasks. Now, some of these menus are really nice. For example, being able to choose a default browser right out of the box here is fantastic. It lets you install any browser you'd want, uh, including some lesser known ones. So this is definitely a great page here. And a lot of these pages have some really great settings. Uh, for example, customization here lets you um, go into the budgie desktop settings to adjust various user interface settings, as well as the regular system settings. Uh, and this is all fine, but as you'll see here in a moment, I don't think this customization page was handled particularly well. Uh, we've got a lot of other post-installation tasks here, such as installing updates and additional drivers, uh, various different languages, uh, as well as some of this additional, as well as some additional tasks, such as setting up backups and your firewall. So this getting started page is pretty nice, and most users will have no issues walking through this. However, as I mentioned, that's probably where most users will stop. 
and that's really unfortunate because there are a lot of features in Ubuntu Bungie that are really only discoverable by digging through this welcome screen. For example, under recommendations, we have a lot of recommended software here. Uh, little utilities and some applications that are really nice to have. For example, getting file previews here in Nemo, the file manager, where you can press space to preview a file, or being able to quickly share files without the need to set up a designated file share folder. Uh, also, things like enabling Flatpak and Snap packages are also done through here, which is very nice to have uh, and opens up a lot of possibilities for additional software. However, there's a good chance a lot of users won't bother to dig through here after having already gone through getting started page. And this is really just scratching the surface of this welcome screen. Underneath install software, we have many more pages of things that honestly have fantastic features, but by this point, most users probably won't bother to go through. And that's exactly why I want to go through these today, because I think otherwise they'll just get tucked away after a user goes through the welcome screen for the first time and then just closes it out, never to use it again. For example, we have the Budgie Desktop Extras, which allow you to install all sorts of additional applets or little widgets onto this top panel here. Uh, these are things such as additional different types of application menus, clipboard utilities, world clock, CPU frequency uh, monitor. Uh, you can set up a global menu if you'd like your application menu bars to be in the top panel. There are lots of fantastic applets here that would be really useful and really allow you to customize the Budgie experience, but having them in the welcome screen and only in the welcome screen is kind of a weird spot to put them. Similarly, if we go back and then back into install software, we have some additional recommendations. This is actually just a duplicate of the other recommendations page, which is a bit strange. Then we have a shortcut here to open up the standard software center. And we can also uh, open the Snapcraft website and the Flathub website to download those types of applications. And under gaming, we have some shortcuts to install some gaming tools such as Steam or Lutris as well as some additional utilities, such as that CPU frequency applet, uh, various programs that might be useful for gaming, such as Discord and OBS Studio, and as well as a few games here that they believe are good enough to be on their curated list here. And finally, then, we have this Themes and Layouts section. And this allows you to quickly install and swap different desktop themes, which is a great feature. Uh, because a lot of these are really nice themes that users would make a point to go online and install anyways. Uh, so it is nice to have them here. And same thing with choosing your desktop layout. By default, it's using Ubuntu Budgie. But we can also choose a more classic looking version of it. As well as layouts that resemble sort of classic Windows, uh, Windows 11, a traditional Budgie desktop, a Unity style desktop, and a Mac OS style. So these are great features to have. It's just, my main problem with this is by the time users spend a good 10 or 15 minutes going through getting started and then probably just closing out this window after they've completed all that, they're not going to find uh, many of these other options. They're not going to realize that they can do all of these things in Budgie. And some of these can be accessed from other locations. For example, if you go into the Budgie desktop settings, here we have some of these options. For example, if we go to top panel, you can then customize uh, which applets appear on this top panel. Uh, and you can pick from the ones you have installed here. But if you wish to install additional ones, you have to do that through the welcome screen. Uh, going into the... I don't remember where it was. I think Budgie Extras. Yeah. And similarly, if you want to adjust the theme on the system, I mean, you, you can do that here in Budgie Desktop Settings. But once again, if you want to install any of those additional themes, 
you have to go back into the welcome screen and dig down here into the themes section to install these. It's not that this is hard to get to, it just doesn't seem like a... It just seems like kind of an out-of-the-way place to put them, and if users don't go through the entire welcome screen in the first place and find them, they may not realize that they're there. A prime example of this is on Budgie's website. Here we have the release notes for the latest version of Ubuntu Budgie 21.10, and even in these release notes, it talks about this uh, window shuffling tool as sort of a quick way to tile your windows to a different layout. Uh, this is very similar to a feature that Windows 11 has, where you can hover over the Maximize button and quickly tile your windows to different layouts. And this is a really cool feature that Budgie has that I haven't seen in other desktop environments, and they spend a lot of time talking about it in their release notes as a great feature. However, it's not enabled by default. Uh, you'll see I have it up here in my panel, and clicking this works as you'd expect. You can click any one of these and it will uh, quickly tile to uh, whatever screen or wh whatever layout that you want. And uh, if we tell this to automatically do the same for all other windows, it will also move them as well. So if I move one of the windows, it will move all of the others accordingly to that layout. So it's a really cool feature. But the fact is, despite this feature being talked about, even in their own release notes, it wasn't enabled by default, and it wasn't particularly obvious where to go to find it. Uh, it turns out you have to go into these budgie settings to your top panel and add it as an applet. It's Window Shuffler. And if you want to install additional applets of these to enable a lot of these functionalities, uh, once again, you'd have to go back into the welcome screen and uh, go to the themes page, or go to the extras page, and install those. For example, also in their release notes, they talk about having an additional layout theme for Windows 11. And yet, in the budgie desktop settings here, there's no option to change your entire desktop layout. Where you have all your theme settings here, this seems like a place you would want to have those layout settings. However, they're not here. If you want to enable those, of course, it is back in the welcome screen tucked away under desktop layout. Overall, my biggest concern with all this is that Ubuntu Budgie has these amazing features that make this an incredibly versatile experience uh, that is highly customizable. But so much of it is just tucked away in the welcome screen, multiple menus deep, and some of the settings feel like they should just natively be in other places, such as the Budgie desktop settings or the regular system settings, which is also another discrepancy here. The fact that we have the regular system settings, which are pulled directly from GNOME, standard Ubuntu here, but all of your themes and additional settings for the Budgie desktop are inside of the Budgie desktop settings. So kind of a weird separation here as well. And then the fact that even more of your settings and appearance tweaks have to be done through the budgie welcome screen uh, really just leads to a lot of discrepancies and makes it difficult to discover a lot of these features. And I feel like I've spent a long time here just talking down on this one aspect, but it really is the biggest problem here because overall this is a fantastic distribution. It has the stability and familiarity of Ubuntu with a desktop environment that is incredibly versatile and modern and easy to use out of the box, but also lets you tweak it in a lot of ways if you choose to do so. The biggest problem is that most of those features are not particularly discoverable. And I do just want to make it clear, I do not think Ubuntu Budgie is a bad distribution. In fact, it's one of the best that I've tried in a long time. And I don't want the negativity of this review to give the wrong impression. I think this has a lot of great features, and I honestly recommend you go try it. Uh, but I just think it's important to note that you're really going to want to look through the entirety of this welcome screen to find a lot of these features and make the most of Ubuntu Budgie, because there's a lot you can do with this that you otherwise would not find. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on Ubuntu Budgie. Do you think I'm being too critical of the concerns that I've mentioned, or do you think that a revamp of a lot of these features and this welcome screen would be a good thing? 
I do recommend you go give Ubuntu Budgie a try, as it has a lot to offer, despite being a bit difficult to find some of its tweaks and customizations. I do hope that you've enjoyed this quick look at Ubuntu Budgie, and if you have, a like on this video would be greatly appreciated. If there's any feedback you'd like to give, feel free to post in the comments, I do my best to reply to all of them. And if you'd like to see more of this content and stay up to date with the latest videos I'm putting out, please consider subscribing to my channel and following me on Twitter, at PlanetLinux98. I hope you've enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you next time.